Hello and welcome to another edition of the Steelers Legend Series, Players Only. 2018 marked two very special anniversaries for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was the 40th anniversary of Super Bowl 13 and the 10th anniversary of Super Bowl 43. So what happened when we had John Stallworth and Franco Harris sit down with Willie Parker and Santonio San Holmes to discuss their respective championships? Well, let's just say there was a lot of good stories and questions. Take a look. Yeah, but what really gets me, I mean, what really gets me is that we played in the single digit Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. can you yeah. believe that? Are you trying to make us look I'm, I'm, old I, I, before we even get started? I wasn't going to go there. Single, <laughs> single, 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 single digits. I didn't single. know how to respond oh, yeah. to that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who would ever have thought? That yeah. That's amazing, though, man. That's amazing. To, man. That's amazing. You to, about to just be here. So, my, I'm pretty sure we'll probably get to it, but my little claim to being a part of the Steelers was when I joined the team in 1995 mm -hmm. as a fan. Because my uncle was a Dallas As Cowboy a fan. My uncle was a Dallas Cowboy fan. And whatever team he rooted for, I rooted against him. Uh, all right. So I became a Steelers fan in that super, watching that Super Bowl. And I was so disappointed at the performance of our receivers. And I remember sitting back on my chair and I said, look, if I ever get a chance to play in the Super Bowl, I will never let this happen to me. So what year was that? That was the one in yeah, 95, 95. 95. Like, like against Dallas. Super Bowl 30. Yeah, I was there for that season. one. I watched it. I was, I was yeah, there. that was a... Uh, I'll never forget that moment. Yeah, and hate then me. I get drafted here, and I was like, yo, this is, this is all right. You know, I love it here. <laughs> and and that interception. We yeah, that. Then we went to the Super Bowl, like, right after that. I'm like, yo, this, this can't be real. This can't be real. What year was that for you guys, though? I mean, you know, when you went to Super Bowl. Was I was year three. That was year three? That was year five? Because you, yep, you're five. Oh, yeah. Year five. And, and so, that was five. John's first year, and that was my third year. When we, so went, when we uh, went the first time, oh, you know, for 13, you know, later on. So we, we're we kind of old hat at it. Uh, so it was a Super Bowl nine, I mean, right? Was it nine? Yeah. Tell me about the first one for you guys. Though. I mean, what 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 was going well, into? I only the I only played in, okay, well, in Super Bowl 43. Okay, tell me about it though. Going uh, into that, how was it? Tell them, tell, them about before. tell them about before the Super Bowl. That's what I said. It was a blur because it passed by so fast. All Coach T kept talking about was we just need to win three games out of four. And we, we played our seasons by quarters. So out of those 16 games, we broke them down into fours. Uh -huh. you know? And what we did was we won three games out of four every Each week. Quarter. Okay. And that, that gave us an opportunity that we had momentum that we could play in the playoffs now because we know we're on the, tra on the track that Coach T is looking for uh -huh. us to be on uh -huh. right there. It was, it was more of a report card for yeah. us. And, yeah. and we, we were family, so tight, so tight. I see these guys, as soon as we see them, we just start screaming like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's camaraderie. It's yeah. like, it took us right back to that locker room. Like we got so many memories, and when we played the Super Bowl, man, it was just, we knew we were going to win the game. So the confidence level. The confidence was sky high. Was there? Was, was it, it, like was it stressful at all for you, though? No, I mean, going no, into the game, did you feel either. pressure? Did, I'm in the Super Bowl, I'm, it's the first one. And <laughs> you can't say it was pressure. <laughs> because we was in a, we was in a yeah. hotel room. We were oh, talking man. about discussing who can get MVP. <laughs> 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 Obviously, hey, he got it. But we were still talking hey, about we wanted that. That was the discussions that. we were having. Funny because, how things change. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the guys had been there. Just about the whole team had been there already. Mm -hmm. So they knew what the taste was. So coming in as a third year player, I had just found my stride with the team. And I'm the, I'm the big receiver with Heinz Ward. confidence Moore. level was so sky high. When Ben. Like knew he needed a situation. I was always him. right there 100%. for him. I just, I just wanted to always be right there. Whatever he needed, I wanted to be right there for him. No questions asked. And how much did you think history played into that too? You know, knowing that, you know, other Super Bowls were won and played before you guys. Oh, y'all paved the way. You no, paved no. the way, and and the tradition was always there. And we knew we was in this game. We had to do something. Yeah. Like, no matter what, like, we had to live up to the hype. Our fans put that pressure on us. But it, As a Pittsburgh Steelers. As a Pittsburgh Steelers. But to know now for me that this is a big moment for me being a part of the Steelers history that I was looking for when I was a kid, when I was 13, when I was 8 years old, whatever, however, whatever age I was in 90, I was about 10, 11. 
and I wanted that. I wanted to be here. And then we got a chance to play in my backyard in the state mm. of Florida. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this is only my, going into that game, only my third game playing back in the state of Florida since I left to go to college. So I hadn't been back around none of the fans, none of my peoples. And I had about 70, 80 classmates that went to the University of South Florida. So I got a chance to see all of them, you know, before the game. So that kind of just boosted me up. I was, I'm, I'm back home. I'm getting to play in front of everybody. I can't put no pressure on myself. All I got to do is just go out there and have fun. And I look at it when I came, right? Uh, I came in 1972. And 1933 to 1971, the Steelers were the worst team in NFL history. They had more losses than any other team. Mm -hmm. Fewest points ever scored, most points scored against. They were the bottom of the barrel. So when people ask me where I want to go, I said, not Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have a great love for the students at all myself. I, I, kept, I was the biggest Oakland Raider fan you ever wanted to see. Okay, okay. Big fan. And the Raiders came from the old AFC. They threw the football, and that's what I wanted to do. Now, that's what I wanted offense. to do in professional football. So I get drafted to a team that, uh, that plays great defense, and they hands, hand off to a big old hairy face guy, you know, all the time. I didn't want to go to Pittsburgh, man. We didn't, they didn't throw the football. But, you know, Super Bowl thirteen was the, the, the first Super Bowl that I was in that I had an opportunity to, to be what I call a factor in the game. With the rule change, like the rule change. What, was, what rule? Well, there was the rule that when, when I came in and, and, and think about the guy I played against every day and practiced against every day was Mel Blunt. A, a defensive back could jam you, hold on to you, do anything to you, assault you, as long as the ball wasn't in the air. So, you know, that, and they, they made a rule change for now they can only jam you in the first five yards. Okay. This was, this was the Super Bowl year? That they this, that. this was uh, uh, that Super Bowl year. They and, made and, a rule change. And our first two Super Bowls, the rule change was not in there. And, and in, uh, that was 74 and 75. And 1976, it definitely wasn't in there. <laughs> That's not a year for all I to talk about. But, but, uh, but 78 and 79. Like the rules were changed. So, so in that in Super Bowl thirteen, I had an opportunity to to be what I call a factor, to catch some passes, to be a part of key part of the game. And so it was that that one more so than the other two. You know, uh, the other two, the first one, Franklin ran the ball. I think he had one hundred and fifty six yards or something in the in, in the game, and and defense just shuts the, the Vikings out. The next the next one, Swan had, has a big game, uh, um, and Bradshaw started still coming into his own. And then in, the, in, the, in our third one, uh, 13, it's an opportunity for our offense to really just to flourish as a passing offense. Because of the rule change. Because of the rule change. So, so we, we played well. I, I played, uh, uh, I was a factor in the game and felt good about that. About that. But for, for good about us as a team throughout the season because we were doing some things, passing the ball. Bradshaw's now very confident very comfortable in his, in his role and who he, who he is and who he was at the time. And, um, and so we played well. Right. And, uh, and, you know, you guys are here, but uh, uh, we had some big play guys, too. Yeah, of these course. Guys. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, and yeah, Swan and Stallworth were Tell me this, though. Incredible. The touchdown <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> you know, tell me about going into that play, that play being called, were you one in the progression? Were you three in the progression? What are you thinking as you go through that, that play? I, I was surprised that we called that play for one. We had ran that play from the first day of, of uh, postseason practice and did not complete that pass, not one time until the last pass of the, N, of the NFL season. Wow. wow, impressive. So, wow. And even before that, Ben and I spent the whole summer that year together working on that catch. Is that right? Throwing the ball. Tone, just go stand in the back of the end zone. He's scrambling all across the field. He's throwing it from wherever he's at. And like just he and I at the facilities by ourselves working on this here, throwing the ball to the, go to the other side. We were running on the other side. Throw it to the other side. Wow. 
like I mean, that blows my mind that it never was completed before. And then now that one completion made history. The, the first day, uh, wow. mm -hmm. uh, I, I almost caught it in the back of the end zone, but my feet were out. So they called it incomplete. I think we tried it two times after that, and Randy, Coach Feedner, came up to me and was like, you know what, he and B.A. both came over and like, you know what, just don't catch the goddamn ball. Don't catch the goddamn ball. That's, that's B.A. talk. And every time I went out and ran that play, I would let it go right through my hands. I would let the defender knock it down. I would step out of bounds and catch the ball, you know what I'm saying, on purpose. Like, we never completed that pass in the same corner that we practiced in every day. We did that play every day in practice. So you saved it. Saved it. You caught it. <laughs> we, get in, we get down to the last couple plays of the game, and B.A. calls this play, and I'm sitting in the huddle like, oh, <laughs> The entire he drive, called, though. He right? called this play. He called it. And the entire drive, he was saying, put it in my hands. But before the drive, I, agree. He was I, saying, put it in I my walked hands. up to, to Ben. Somebody make a play. I walked up to Ben standing on the sideline. And it was just right after Fitzgerald scores a touchdown, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around, and the flashback hit me as a little kid, like, this is, this is the time that you got to be great. Like, you said you wanted to be in this moment, so now you got to live up to that. And B-Mac uh, McFadden comes around, Tone, what you going to do? What you going to do, Tone? It's your time now. And I'm sitting there, I'm just thinking to myself, it's time to be great. It's time to be great. You know what like I'm great. daring, I'm daring to be great right now. Mm. And that's when I just jumped up and was like, you know what, I'm daring to be great. So I walked over and stood next to Ben and I tapped him on his hip. He didn't even look at me. He stared staring out in the field. I say, hey, Seven, um, no disrespect to the other guys, but I want the ball right now. He never looked at me, never said a word to me. Strapped up my helmet, said, oh well, it's time to go to work. We run out on the field. I get one look back at B.A. Uh, on the sideline, and he, he gave me a little head nod. The first play, Ben threw the ball to me on a skinny route, and I wasn't even out of my break. I mean, the time I hit the ground and did this shit, the ball was in my hip before I could even see it, but I saw it. We got a, we got a safety on that play. So going through my mind, oh, man, we, we're done. Like, we, 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 can't, we, we, we can't get the ball back. And then these guys forced the ball back after that safety, and gave us the ball back, I think, what, 20, 18 yard line, 13 yard line. He came right back to me the next play. The next play come right back to me. And I'm, I'm in a maze, like, well, I guess he heard me. The next play, he come right back to me on the next play. Then he hit Heath Miller, and I think then, then Nate catches his one pass, uh, gets hurt. And, um, and that's when he came back to me on that scramble curl where the guy slipped and I was able to break free on the big play. You know, and everybody in this table right here knows those big moments. The big moments. To make those big moments in Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It, and, was, uh, it was destined. Big and, moments, and, and big moments make, it really does make a difference. Oh, yeah. You're, you're a big run. In, in our game against the Cowboys, I mean, the, the down near the end, yeah, I was 27 yards or whatever it was when you were straight up the middle. Uh, big play for us. Yeah. Big play but, for yeah. us. But all the Super Bowl, different Super Bowls, everybody had some big plays. Yeah. And, now, and be, a before big that play, play I, and looking, at, looking at replays, before that, something happened. The play before that, and, and, and the announcer made a lot, of, a lot about it, that some, something that happened to upset Franco. <laughs> and the very next play, you burst through for the, for the, for the touchdown. Now, did something happen to upset you, or was it just guys taking liberty and doing the announcing or something? Well, the play before that, uh, well, you know, uh, the week of the game, Tommy Henderson, the linebacker of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, was, you know, just making statements and making statements about Bradshaw. And, you know, saying like Bradshaw couldn't spell cat if you gave him the C and the A. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and wow. like different things like that. And, uh, and so the, the play before, they sacked Bradshaw and, uh, and like Tommy Henderson was mouthing off. And, and you know, so I, you know, you know, got in his face and, and we had some words and uh, 
And Brad said, oh, call my play. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, Franco, you can have the ball. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and once again, it was just one of those moments where, you know, you know things happen and, and, you know, the right energy for me because I was pissed off, as you yeah. said. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then at that moment, to be able to make a moment and score a touchdown. Yeah, that, that big. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was big. You know, yeah, the, uh, Chuck Noel always told us that, that we should be ready for the big play because a big play could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if, 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 it's, if you're on the verge of it, and you never know you're on the verge of it, but if you're not in the right mental frame of mind when it happens, you're being on the sideline saying, being I want the ball, Franco being a little bit perturbed but wanting the ball right now, Willie certainly in your big plays, you know, it, you don't know when it's going to happen, but you got to be in the yeah, right ready. mental frame of mind when they do happen. You got to take I advantage agree. of the opportunity, and certainly you, you t in your big plays, you took advantage of the opportunities. Yeah, my Super Bowl, well, our Super Bowl, um, it was, you know, we had the energy and the, the game was going back and forth, and the ref were making calls here, the ref were making calls there, you know how I go, and then somebody just needed to make a play. And when they called my number at halftime, man, just everything opened up, Alan Fanta could come around, and we ran this play, just like Tone said. But it was opposite of what Tone, we ran this play all the time with success. And I seen Alan Fanica come around, he cleared it, and, and, and it's just like you draw it up on a blackboard, everything just opened up. And um, it was just a foot race. You know, if, if Franco runs that same play, it's about a 20-yard game. 29. <laughs> Frank, 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 it'd be more than a 20-yard The way that hole opened up, it'd probably be at least 70. Yeah. At least. At least 70. But it was a foot race, and um, it, it was just energy, man. The whole stadium. Um, I just remember when he caught that um, pass. Mm -hmm. It felt the same. Just the energy just go through your body. And I'm pretty sure your play was the same way, and your big plays were the same way. The energy just, just, from it, just, just rise in your body. I'm in the stands for that game. I think we were sitting kind of close to each other yeah. uh, at the game. 43. And, uh, and so they just scored. Chris Gerald just scored. And, it, and we're kind of down, and we're saying, wow, you know come out this way and, we, and we're not going to do well, we're not going to win the game. And Edmund Nelson, I don't know who you know Edmund or not, Edmund Nelson is sitting about four seats away from me. He says, Stahl, don't worry about it. This is what Ben does. He, he's been doing it all year. This is what he does. I, don't worry about it. And, and then lo and behold, boom, he throws him out of you. And I'm thinking, well, I guess <laughs> Edmund's right. This is what Ben does. The entire season. We had, he had that cool, calm collectiveness about him that when he stepped in the huddle, he gave you his eyes and attention, and you felt his body language. Because he would tell you, hey, I need you right here. Mm -hmm. If it was Nate, if it was Hines, if it was me, if it was Heath, if it was, hey, I need you right now. I'm throwing you the ball right now. And you would run out the huddle like, dang, you ain't going to even give me a chance <laughs> to get open. But he knew how to take control of the games in different moments that other players don't realize. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the ball to play with him because he throws the ball around, but he knows where the ball should go, when it should go, where it should go at the right time. That's why his timing is always on point. Like he can deliver that ball through a hole that nobody else sees, like how did Ben throw that ball? Why did he throw the ball? Why did he hold on to the ball so long? Because he has an understanding of how strong he is and what he's capable of doing. If he can buy two to three more seconds inside that pocket, we're going to make a big play. And he always told us, don't give up. After the play would be over in practice, he would keep running and say, nope, this is scramble drill. Keep it going. And we would have to turn around and just take off and find our ways to get open. And we did that in practice over and over and, and over if, and, and over every day. And if players day. believe that. Yeah. That no matter what, that we can make a play, no matter what the situation is, that we can make something happen and turn the game around. I tell people that uh, we were always confident in every Super Bowl that we were going to win, but it, but it wasn't like having a big head yeah. with nothing like that. You know what I mean? But we went into the game feeling confident that we're the best team in football and that it's up to us to win the game, and we can win this game. Uh, but, and, and you, you know, 
hey, you know, like, we weren't running well. Like, I felt very confident that Brad and Stahl and Swan make things happen. You know what I mean? And, and, and if pass it wasn't going well, well, we felt that we could run the ball. You know what I mean? That, and then our defense could stop. Our defense could make plays. You know, that's a big part of it too, right? For all of us. The biggest yeah, part. You know, <laughs> where, where like the defense makes plays, but it's all about where you have that confidence that someone will step up. You know, like it's, 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 it's one of the greatest, it's the greatest team game. You know, so accountability. Yep, it, it accountability. It counts, you know, for everything. And I think playing with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it taught me that even more than what I had learned playing at Ohio State. Because those guys would chew each other off if somebody else made, made a bad mistake. And they let each other know it. No, that's your fault. And we all had to stand there and you had to take it. Because we're holding you accountable that you should get that job done. That you can't blame it on nobody else. And yes, we are gonna point the finger directly at you because it's your fault. And we always scream, do your yep. job. Yep, that's it. Do, do your, your job. job. Like we do get in job. we start talking to other position groups and stuff, then do your job. Yep. That's all you gotta do. And you know what? And, and I tell defensive guys, what you did on that field inspired me. I watched our defense and they be hitting the heck out of the other running backs. <laughs> and I'd be saying, yeah. <laughs> 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 and, 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 but, it, it, but it really inspired me when I went on the field, you know what I mean? So, you know, different things can inspire you, and, and, mm -hmm. and our defense inspired me. To that point, I probably was one of the biggest cheerleaders that, that our defense had. I'm running up and down the field, hey, somebody better get me that ball back. We can't, we can't win without that ball back. Mr. Clark, hey, I need an interception, man. I need a turnover. Somebody got to get me that ball back. And I was that guy that was always looking at one of my defensive players. Somebody got to make a play right here. You know, I didn't like sitting down with the coaches talking about the game. I wanted to cheer my defensive players on. I wanted those guys to get me the ball back so that my offense can get down and try to score another touchdown. You know, that, that was a little bit different, I think, for us, at least for me. And Franco, maybe a little bit different for you in that, you know, our, our coach at the time didn't believe in a whole lot of talk. You know, we, you know, he, caught, he thought it was false bravado, and I'm saying it was for you guys, but for us, it was a quiet confidence, uh -huh. uh, uh, maybe a word here and there, but, but, but a quiet confidence in going out and doing our job and, 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 and concentrating on that. And, and, and for him, the fun part of playing football was winning. So that's what, that, that was his, his, his mantra, you know, uh, having fun is winning. We, we came into our Super Bowls from a, with a coach who had coached with the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl three, the one that Joe Namath won, who, and Namath saying that we're gonna win, and he, and he won. But no saw a Baltimore Colts team that was pressured, that was tense the whole week of the Super Bowl. So his thing for us was let's relax, let's have fun, none of the false stuff. We're gonna go out, we're the best team in football, and we're gonna win. So it wasn't a whole lot of, just a lot of talk. That wasn't our makeup. And I'm not, that's not anything wrong with that being the makeup of any other team, but for us, it was a very quiet confidence, maybe a word here and there. You know, we had some guys on our team that when they spoke, you listened to what they had to say. You know, if Joe said something, everybody's heads turned around and see what Joe's got to say. You know, Franco's that kind of leader. Bradshaw's that kind of leader. Lambert's on defense, that kind of leader. And, and it was a quiet kind of confidence. And so we went into games with that kind of confidence, and, and we won a bunch of football games with that demeanor. Yeah, um, Star, I just want to follow up with that. It's, it's not Super Bowl thirteen, but our first one, Super Bowl nine. This is our first time going, right? First time. Uh, you know, for all of us, and and Chuck gave us all this time off. He said, "Go enjoy yourself for a few days," and you know, because you go down early, this right? And, and yeah, yeah, no, this is in New Orleans, New Orleans. of all towns, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 so the first few days we really enjoyed it, but as you said, then later in the week we knew, okay, now's the time. To focus, you know, but uh, but the first couple of days there, we did. We were loose, you know. We felt good, and 
uh, you know, kind of embraced the, you know, embraced the city and, uh, and, and really felt at home. And then you remember the hotel we were at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so we look at all those things and, uh, and it, it, like it was comfortable. Yeah. You know, there wasn't that pressure. And, and like, I guess we had, as you said, that quiet confidence. We knew what we had to do. Thank you so much for joining us for the Steelers Legends series, Players Only. It was so much fun to look back at Super Bowls 13 and 43 and hear from the legends who helped bring two of the team's six championship trophies here to Pittsburgh.